Hi there, it's Nicole here for Simon Says Stamped today with a big picture book bunny hoppy Easter card. This is a scene card created with almost entirely white die cut pieces that I have customized with Copic markers. I'm going to be using some Lawn Fawn dies in addition to my Simon Says Stamp dies to create my scene. I have laid out all of my images here and we are going to start by building our background. On a piece of smooth white cardstock, I'm going to take some Lawn Fawn Minty Fresh ink and the My Favorite Things Cloud Stencil and just work my way kind of back and forth with this stencil at an angle to build this cloud background. I wanted to keep the background kind of more in a pastel shade and a little non-traditional cloud color. Mint is always a favorite of mine, and so that's where we're gonna build our background. A lot of this will get covered with our bunny, but I want something in the background to add a little color and a little interest. I'm using the life-changing brushes from Picket Fence with my regular dye ink, and you can see how awesome those are can be applied to just a regular cardstock, no specialty cardstock needed. Now this border is the Lawn Fawn Stitched Garden Border, die cut from, again, Nina Heavyweight Smooth White cardstock, and then I'm taking my Copic markers in E55, 57, and 47, and adding color to this garden. This garden border is one of my very favorites. It's not new. It's been out for a little bit, but I have recently rediscovered my love for this dye. I think it's fantastic. You can create such amazing springtime borders with this, especially when paired with bunnies and carrots, which is really my favorite way to use this. I will even link to a video that shows another idea for using this border at the end of this video. Now, once I have my color down and all blended, I'm gonna take my darker two markers and add in a little dot detail to make this look a little bit more like dirt. This will be going across the bottom of the card. It's gonna serve as a great border to ground my whole scene. We can tuck our bunny behind it. We're gonna tuck carrots into those little scallops there, those little dirt mounds. I've also die cut my carrots from the stitched garden border set from Smooth White Cardstock, and I'm adding color to those with Copic markers. For the carrot itself, that's YR01, 0, 0, 04, and 0, 09. And the top of the carrots is YG21, 23, and 17. I colored one on screen, but for the most part, I'll color the rest off screen because there's four more carrots, and that's gonna save us a little time today. The body of the bunny is the Simon Says Stamp Big Picture Book Little Body Die. So Simon Says Stamp has a great collection of bodies now that go with their picture book, their big picture book animals, so that you can mix and match and use the body that works best for the critter you're using. For the big picture book bunny head, I liked this little body, and I have die cut these from Nina Smooth White cardstock as well, and I'm adding color with my warm gray markers. So the bunny's still going to look white, because I'm using the very lightest of gray markers with warm gray 0013 and then a little R00 for the cheeks and the inside pieces of the ears, but very light and when blended out with the warm gray 00 marker, it just gives some great shading and doesn't take away from the overall look and feel of this card. As I get all of this blended out really nicely, we can go ahead and start putting some of these pieces together on our background. I really did a lot of mixing and matching today. Mixing and matching of different supplies and companies to bring them together for one card is definitely my very favorite thing. So we've got a My Favorite Things stenciled background. We've got Simon Says Stamp dies and then stamped sentiments. And then we've got Lawn Fawn dies and then Copic markers. Love mixing and matching. It's like I said, my favorite thing. Shop your supplies. 
go through them and mix and match and pick different elements to go together. In this case, I very much was inspired. I knew I wanted to use the Big Picture Book Bunny and I had recently used the Lawn Fawn Stitch Garden Border and I thought, wouldn't it be cute to see if they work together? And I was so excited when I got to working on this and I could see that the eggs were the right size for this little guy to hold in his arms and the carrots were a nice big size to tuck into these little mounds in the garden border. It all just came together perfectly and that is just one of my absolute favorite things. Now I started by coloring in his nose pink, which you maybe notice here. I ended up coloring another nose and I already glued it down, which is not the end of the world. In fact, I think it even worked out better. Oftentimes I like to layer a couple of layers for different elements on the face to make the, let's in this case, the nose stick out a little further, which really works. So while I didn't really love the pink nose and I decided to go with some darker warm grays for it instead, I'm going to layer it right on top and it makes a world of difference in this bunny's face. I could color in the eye pieces for the bunny, but I opted not to. Um, I did die cut that from some Lawn Fawn black licorice cardstock. For the majority of this card, I have customized the elements with Copic markers, ex with the exception of two places, and that is the eyes, that's black licorice cardstock, and then the bow on top of the bunny's head. And I will tell you the reason I chose not to do it for the bunny's head, uh, hair bow is because it's a dimensional bow. And when you assemble the bow, you see the color on the inside. And I just didn't think I could color it in a way where it was gonna be the same color through and through. So I opted to use some Hero Hues Peony Pink cardstock. This is my current favorite color of light pink cardstock, so pretty. So again, here's another company represented in this project, which I love. We're going to assemble the bow and then we're going to glue that to the top of the bunny's head. And this just adds a nice little touch to the top. And this is the Lawn Fawn Put a Bow on It die collection. So I'm still messing around curling those edges of the bow to get it as smooth as possible. I did end up taking a Copic marker in RV52 and adding some shading. It's really light. Um, it looks a little darker before the ink completely drives, but it will give a tiny bit of depth and dimension to the bow so it really matches the rest of the coloring in the design. And then we will assemble this. And again, I'm rolling this around in my fingers and gluing it in the back with liquid adhesive and then I like to hold it shut with a pair of tweezers. Tweezers are a fantastic little tool to use when you're assembling bows. You may have seen me using the tweezers to hold the carrots in the ground because I put little dots of liquid, liquid glue behind them and that's going to hold them nice and flat. And so I use the tweezers oftentimes for little things like that where I want to hold them in place until the glue is all the way dry. I did forget the bunny tail um, as I was working and adhering the bunny and it's going to be stick over there kind of on the right side. You can see it sticking out. It's really bright white at the moment. I will go in and add some of those really light warm gray colors to that bunny tail just so it kind of looks like he's, you know, leaning over to the side maybe a little bit and his little tail sticking out and I'll show you that here in a second. Because my tweezers weren't quite long enough, I kept trying and they were not long enough any direction I tried. I did take an acrylic block and put it on top of this bow, kind of down the center to help hold it down and in place until the adhesive is all the way dry. And I did, I kept trying and I just could not make that work, darn it. So here's my acrylic block. We will do that next and hold that down in place. Maybe it did not want to stay put either. So we're, let's take those warm gray markers, as I mentioned, and I'm just doing a little warm gray zero zero and then taking warm gray one and three and adding some little dots to give his little poofy bunny tail some texture. 
and this is going to hang off the side of the card and we can trim that off here in a little bit. We're going to have several things to trim off, the tips of the ears, the tip of the tail, and then a little sliver of one of the eggs that we will be putting in place here in just a second. Let's go ahead and replace the eyes. I've got my little black die cut eye pieces. And this makes the face come to life. It truly does. It was really needing those eyes. So there is our bunny's sweet little face. I'm gonna draw in some eyelashes with a fine tip black pin. We're gonna take a white pin and add detail to the nose, a little highlight to the nose. We're also going to add some little highlights to the black part of the eyes. And then we will put at the very end of the card, after I've done all the things and put everything in place, we will go ahead and put glossy accents over the eyes and nose to really make those shine. We can go ahead and tuck our garden border along the bottom edge now. We just ha have a couple of eggs to tuck along that left side, which we can do here in just a second. We're, it's still loose enough along that edge that it will be easy enough to add those. And then I've got these awesome stitched eggs here, or I think these are called the mini Easter eggs. And I'm gonna color these in with Copic markers as well. poke out all those little polka dots, and we're gonna layer this over a solid egg that's been colored with G00 and G02. And this is going to be the egg that the bunny's holding in its arms. I purposely went with pastels for my eggs. I wanted them to, we've got orange and green represented along our garden border with the carrots. We've got that great minty sky, which we used a little bit of those minty colors for the backside of this egg. So I want some pinks, I want some yellows, and some lavender. And that looks so cute, tucked into his arms, so perfect. Um, I love finding seasonal die cuts that you can use to tuck into these big picture book body arms. Many of them have arms where you can actually hold something, um, which makes that really, really fun. And here are our eggs. I've got one more egg I need to color here really quick. And this one's gonna be our lavender one with some blue violet colors. This is blue violet, blue violet 11 and 13. And then we can glue these down in place before we add our stamped sentiments. One of my favorite stamp sets that goes with the big picture book line of dies from Simon Says Stamps is the Punny Animals stamp set. So I started with that and I built upon that phrase, hey hop stuff, with the rest of the greetings I'm using. So I'm using another phrase. This is from the Simon Says Stamp Easter greetings stamp set. And it's so it's the entire sentiment on the front of the card is gonna read, Hey, hop stuff, you'll always be someone extra special to me. This works fantastic for Easter, so much fun. So I stamped the bottom portion in purple, which really matches our purple egg. That's the Simon Says Stamp Hydrangea ink. And the Hey, hop stuff, we are stamping with Simon Says Stamp Scuba ink, which really works with the mint colors we've used throughout the card. I wanted to use colorful ink, something that would show up nicely over the cloud background, but not a harsh black that I thought would take away from our spring scene. In addition to the front of the card now, and I'm gonna just go ahead and snip off anything hanging off the edges, I want to stamp something on the inside of the card. And from that Easter greeting stamp set, there is a hoppy Easter sentiment. And we're gonna stamp that with the scuba ink on the inside of a white card base. And that's gonna just finish it off, make this look very beautiful and finished, not only on the front, but on the inside of the card as well. I know I've mentioned this um, before, but one of my big goals for 2019 is to add those finishing details to the insides of cards um, and to envelopes whenever I can. 
Now I'm going to add some dimensional embellishments. These are some Honeybee Stamps Crystal Clear Acrylic Hearts. We're going to have one centered underneath the sentiment and then a couple up above. Again, they're clear. They add just a fun little embellishment, but don't take away from the overall finished look of this design. I'm attaching those with the Gina K Connect glue. And then we're going to take a white pin, add in some little white dots on the cheeks of our bunny. We're going to add some little highlights to the carrots. I'm not going to overly highlight this piece. I added it a little to the carrots, a little highlight to the eggs, the dots on the cheeks of the bunny, and then a little bit on the inside pink portion of the ears. But other than that, I really kept... Um, the highlighting to a minimum. I did not want to overpower the coloring. I really wanted the shading and coloring of these die cut images to shine. Once we have that done, we can attach this panel to our white top fold card base that we stamped Hoppy Easter on the inside. Oh, and I did add a little bit to the bow. I forgot. Um, I thought adding those little lines coming out from the center of the bow gave it a little bit more definition. Finally, we're finishing with that glossy accents over the nose and the eyes, like I mentioned earlier in the video. I like to wait whenever possible to the end of the project so that I can sit and dry and I don't have to worry about getting my hand in it. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for this Hey Hop Stuff Hoppy Easter card featuring Simon Says Stamp, Big Picture Book dies, and some Lawn Fawn dies. The supplies I used to complete this card are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here are a couple more cards featuring e the Easter theme that you might be interested in. Thanks for joining me today, and we'll catch you next time.